welcome. This is a CNBC TV 18 special. I am Shweta Kothari. And today we have with us the CEO and co-founder of Snapdeal, Kunal Behel. Kunal, thank you very much for talking to us here at CNBC TV 18. And let me first begin by asking you, you recently launched a brand new campaign called Unbox Zindagi. What's the response been so far and what was the strategic rationale behind coming up with this new campaign? You know, we as a brand have been around for about five, six years now. And we would followed a similar trajectory from a brand positioning standpoint. But over the last one year, we spent a lot of time meeting consumers across the country in their households, in their offices, going shopping with them in markets. And one thing became clear to us, that more than ever before, consumers in India, especially the youth in India, feel that their time has come. And that the future is going to be far more positive and better than the past has been. And we said if this is really the underlying feeling of consumers in India, then shouldn't our brand represent that in its own way? Okay. Where our goal is that leveraging Snapdeal, consumers across India should be able to unlock their aspirations. Mm -hmm. And hence this whole uh, campaign around Unbox Zindagi. And it's actually worked extremely well, um, much beyond our expectations. Already, I think un the word unbox has become synonymous with Snapdeal. Okay. And bear in mind, this campaign is not even a month old. Mm -hmm. So we're very happy with the results. Does this also mean that your area of focus will now change or you will do away with verticals or businesses that are not viable to you? I think uh, e-commerce companies are responsible for making verticals and categories viable for themselves. Um, and, and you do that by focusing on efficiency of your operations. Mm -hmm. Over the last one year, we've spent a lot of time, a lot of energy in making our supply chain extremely efficient, our category management extremely efficient, because the more efficiencies we can bring out in our business, the better value we can deliver to our buyers and sellers. Uh, you talked about uh, changes in supply chain what are the changes that you have made recently in terms of your infrastructure or, uh, for that matter, your logistics? I think over the last 18 months, one of our biggest focus areas, if not our biggest focus area, has been investment in uh, infrastructure for logistics. Traditionally, we were a marketplace that connected buyers and sellers, mm -hmm. and sellers would ship products directly to consumers. But over a period of time, we started realizing that uh, despite us being a marketplace, Consumers want the best possible experience, and sellers oftentimes don't have the wherewithal or the infrastructure to deliver the best experience. Okay. And so we built millions of square feet of space. Actually, interestingly, as of August, just in the month of August 2016, we opened one million square feet of warehousing space where sellers on Snapdeal pre-stocked their products. This we did in anticipation of the surge in volume during Diwali. Now, so you've also taken other initiatives for sellers, for that matter, a collateral free loan of 1,000 crore rupees to enable them to stock up. Uh, what is the impact that you're anticipating? You know, one of the problems that exists in India with especially small businesses is access to reliable and cost-effective credit. Especially the really the, the medium and small businesses who can't necessarily go to banks or informal channels every day to get short-term loans, mm -hmm. uh, either because it's too cumbersome or it's too expensive. So through Capital Assist, which is our seller financing platform, where we work with banks and and NBFCs, who leveraging the data we have about the seller's sales on Snapdeal give them great, uh, very short-term loans mm -hmm. at uh, very reasonable rates of interest. Where for sellers, if they go raise capital or go get working capital from offline channels, it may cost them 3 to 4 percent a month. We give it to them at 1 to 1.5 1 percent a month. And that's how their business grows on Snap to you. Okay. So just this Diwali, we've had hundreds of sellers who've taken loans over a crore rupees mm -hmm. uh, just to catalyze their business and leverage the increase in demand that has happened this Diwali. All right, so we're already in the midst of festive season. What's the response been so far and what are the initiatives that you're taking to boost sales? So I think a lot of our initiatives are around uh, delivering a great customer experience. So a couple of initiatives that we've really doubled down on over the last few months are increasing our footprint of next day delivery. 
So if you order today, you'll get the product in, in the next day. Okay. Um, and we offer that in over 100 cities now. And we've seen a massive uptick this Diwali. Um, about 15 to 20% of all our orders are now uh, consumers are availing of next day delivery option. Okay. We launched a new service called Snap to Your Gold, mm -hmm. where, which goes hand in glove with our next day delivery footprint, where if you prepay uh, using a credit card or free charge or a debit card or net banking, you get a free upgrade to next day delivery at no extra charge. We've seen consumers really take that up. We've also partnered a lot with banks this Diwali. Every day of the month, some bank or the other is actually uh, offering an additional discount to consumers, their consumers, mm -hmm. uh, which has also driven a lot of demand for us. Okay, we will talk about discounting in a while. I want to first talk about the marketing spend, which is about 200 crores, which stands prior to the festive season. How confident are you that you'll be able to cash in on this money that you've spent? Actually, we... Uh, um, uh, a lot of people asked us this question, are you spending too much, are you spending too little? And uh, the right answer is you almost never know. Okay. Um, but we felt based on our plans, this was the right amount to spend. Mm -hmm. And I'm very happy that over the last 30 days since we launched this campaign, we've seen a doubling of our traffic. Mm -hmm. Our daily traffic has doubled in the last 30 days. And that is very visible in everything we're doing in terms of seeing the, in, the significantly enhanced interest of buyers, significantly enhanced interest of sellers. It's also extremely galvanizing for the team mm -hmm. because they see a very well thought out campaign being appropriately externalized. Um, so overall, I would call it a, a, a very, very good success. I think all of my expectations have mostly been met, but uh, the key is to keep raising the bar. So now we're raising the bar ahead. All right, then we'll talk about discounting norms that have recently changed over last one year, which actually uh, prevent you from making any promotional offers or cashbacks. Has it had any impact on your sales performance? Look, the sellers are providing the, uh, the promotions to consumers. If you go to an offline market um, in a mall or in a high street location or a bazaar, the seller is providing the discounts. Mm. Our view is, our goal is to facilitate a great customer experience, a great seller experience, and bring a lot of traffic of buyers to the sellers. Okay. After that, it is really up to the sellers whether they want to uh, sell or not. And we can obviously help them with a lot of analytics about what are consumers looking for. Mm -hmm. Like for instance, if you know full sleeves, black uh, shirts with the uh, V-neck is very popular, it's because we see that from our search trends, it's uh, our responsibility to offer that information to sellers and some will act upon it and some will not act upon it. Right. And those who will act upon it will succeed and build large businesses online and those who don't, won't. So has there been no change at all? I think there, um, what we are seeing is that there is a clear separation that is happening okay. amongst the sellers. Some sellers are becoming very successful online and some are actually falling away. Okay. And a lot of it is because the ones who are falling away are not being innovative in understanding pricing uh, because the onus is on them to price appropriately. They're not understanding the category mix well. But, but we are also helping them to, uh, to be successful. All right. So what are the initiatives that you've taken at your end uh, to ensure that the, uh, that the target, uh, the sales target sure. remains at constant? Yeah, I think uh, uh, we have to, as a marketplace, focus on doing the right things for the long run. And I think doing the right things in the long run for us largely focus on customer experience. Uh, and I would also argue building a very efficient operation. So on customer experience, we've done a lot around next day delivery. We've done a lot around making sure majority of the orders that are uh, products that are ordered by consumers are pre-stocked in our warehouses so they can be checked properly before they are shipped out. Okay. Um, my view is that the real magic moment for consumers in e-commerce is the moment of delivery. Right? That's, when, that's why you placed the order. That's why you went to the app or the website. That's why you are engaged with e-commerce. For some of them, it's discounts also, you know? <laughs> Possibly. Yeah, and, and I, I, I don't think that's a unique behavior exhibited only for e-commerce. Right. I think uh, you should see the lines when the Diwali sales happen offline. Yeah, right? The lines are long there, too. Oh, yes. Um, yes. But we, we really want to own 
the magic moment okay. of delivery and hence the the red box right hence the um, the surprise gifts that we put in many of the packages mm -hmm. which consumers don't expect and uh, and there are many other innovations we are doing so so that we make the point of delivery and the point of opening the box extremely delightful it's time for a quick commercial break we'll be right back mm -hmm.